We want to get that water to travel over the top of the aqua blocks instead of disappearing right down into the gravel at the base of the waterfall. The reason we do that is just to increase, it's purely for aesthetic value, one. Second is it actually is going to increase the functionality. It's going to push the debris that falls down on top of the gravel and push it all into one centralized area. The thing that you need to be concerned about, folks, is the infiltration area itself. You are taking a very large footprint and condensing it down to a very small footprint. So we're actually only using a a fraction of the infiltration area of the aqua blocks and that's where all of that debris is going to collect so it's important to keep in mind the maintenance side of things as well it's a mistake i made at my own house and it's something to consider when you're doing some of these more advanced build techniques everybody it is the beginning of day two and a half out here we had a very busy productive day yesterday we got the reservoir back behind me in today we're gonna go ahead and refocus our energy on this upper pooling area right behind me where a stack slate sphere is going to sit and act as the headwaters for a little stream that's going to meander in and dump into the pond right down in this area and through here we're going to kind of work our way out from this project like we talked earlier in the video so we're gonna focus on the stream pooling area with the stack slate sphere and we're also going to focus on the little patio seating area on the back side of the reservoir because if we don't do it now we're gonna lose complete access so we're gonna go ahead and try and take care of that first things first we're gonna go ahead and made the decision after thinking about it overnight I wanted to lower the depth of this pooling area up here which will help us a little bit with our water level over in this area the reason I'm doing that is because I have this maple tree in the root flare that I need to compensate for so if water level is too high then I have to build up soil all on that back side so the reason I am lowering this is so that I don't have to have as much soil and I'm not competing or having to add soil on the backside over there. Just be careful that electric. That's why I had them hand digging it. So this way we're not manipulating the grade on the backside because everything's sloping away from the house. I don't want to start burying trunks of trees or anything like that to make up for water depth over here or water level, excuse me. We're gonna make this a little bit deeper. It won't change the height terribly of the sphere in here, maybe about four or five inches lower, but we could always vault that thing up if we felt like it was too low from providing a visual impact from inside the house. So we're gonna work on this area. We've got a bridge element that's going to cross somewhere over the stream going this way, leading you down to to that seating area down below in between the red maple and the bald cypress. milestone here on the project we have a large stack slate sphere we did our standard oh let me get down here three watt light cut in and then we are going to put a stub of inch and a half rigid pipe running up through it we are going to start using inch and a half on these spheres for a couple reasons one is actually just one main reason and that's to decrease in the diameter of our normal two inch pipe that we run up through there we are not sacrificing volume but we get a little bit more upward movement with that water when we really crank it up so we're going to use inch and a half pipe you get to shoot up a little bit more without sacrificing volume or without having to use extra water to make the same visual impact. Also by doing that what it's doing is it is allowing us to use more water in the waterfall stream area itself. So we're going to manifold that and I'll show you that here in a little bit but main milestone other than getting the sphere set up here and getting it strategically placed to be able to be viewed from inside the house is also getting the first rock in place. So big milestone here is getting the first rock set that kind of will set the pace for this area. We've got our peanut gallery over over there where are they at <laughs> you can kind of see them in there but we've got the customer chris her daughter isabella and, and chris's mom kind of watching us every day so it's great to have them and watch them appreciating what we do so without further ado let's get this first rock in and start rolling Good morning, everybody. 
everybody. Dan, Jack, of course. Corey's running some errands for us. He's grabbing some stone from the shop. But we are just getting started here. I don't know, maybe it's day four, five. I'm not really sure. But a new day, a beautiful day out here in Geneva, Illinois on this amazing project. You can see behind me the large Saxolate sphere in this kind of pooling area. This is what we worked on yesterday. Kind of scratched all this area out and then just started setting the framework. And this is going to be kind of the headwater stream area for that meandering stream that comes right up next to the patio and then we'll dump into the pond which is all over and through here. We've got a few kind of struggles, maybe challenges, uh, and it's mostly the overhead canopy of this maple and just being able to get our machine in here. So a couple of these rocks were a little difficult so we've kind of had to work our way in and out. Jack, spin that rock so that the high side's the back. Keep going, keep going, good. Now spin it up, hold on. Spin your right hand back just a little bit. Um, actually go back the other way. A little bit more right there. Butt it up to that rock. Go to your right, Dan, just a hair. Okay, teeth down. There you go. Go ahead and guide him down, Jack. It should sit about an inch higher. Okay, so we need a little bit of gravel. Hold on, need to get put some gravel in there. I want the top of that rock to be about an inch above, okay? You want to level or pitch this? Pitch forward a little bit, yep. All right, so Jack's gonna run and go grab some gravel. We wanna prop that rock up just a little bit. Anyway, so we had talked about the stepping stone element and that's exactly what this is. So this rock right here that I'm standing on is seven inches below the top of patio here. So you step down to it and then step across and then we will have kind of a rustic, meandering little pathway. We're gonna put a couple of big kind of slab outcropping stones in here that's leading you to a seating area, just enough room for a bench. So we'll have a couple steps down right there and then we'll, we're gonna have a custom wood, kind of driftwood bench that will sit in this area in over here. We're gonna drop in a couple of weathered limestone chunks just to carry the design through. Maybe frame out the two steps that need to come down. This is gonna be very rustic. It's not gonna be that, that normal look with our steps, which has, you guys have seen that kind of, not so much a staircase look, but how they one behind the other and on top of the other, twisting and turning. It's just gonna be way more rustic. Like I said, a little bit more organic and free form and informal would be about all the adjectives that I would use. We're gonna need to build up to about that level all in through here around that maple tree in order to compensate for water level in the pond, which is right about there. So we need to add about eight, 10 inches of dirt to get up to the elevation that we need to hold back all the water to build our waterfalls, all that stuff. So we're gonna focus our energy on this and rocking in the basin today. And hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have a kick butt waterfalls and patio area and basin to kind of walk away at the end of the day with. So we've got the new trusted machine over there. We've got a great team. We've got Jack and Dan like I said, and Corey will be back here shortly to help us out, and we are going to, it's just the four of us today, we're gonna to make great progress. So I hope you guys enjoy the ride. Hey. All right, we're back everybody. We have had a productive morning. We got our steps over here set that are coming from our bridge element, you know, which is kind of that stepper bridge that goes across the stream coming down from that upper patio up there. Turned out really, really nice. We still have a bunch of rocks that we have to put in here, but we got a couple rocks in the reservoir here. We've got one covered up. We'll fold the liner back in a little bit and show you. We've got a big stepper stone for their daughter as well as them to use to come across this reservoir. And big moment is that we excavated all this out so that we can start building our waterfalls for that overflow system. Now the whole pond is going to overflow into this reservoir. So it's super important that we understand where water level is. And it's actually about eight inches above where grade is existing. So I went ahead, established where water level for the pond needs to be. And I am going to size my frame rocks accordingly, giving them about six inches above where water level is going to be. So my rocks need to end up almost being to about there, which will actually work out really, really well. Once that fabric's put down, I'll show you right there at the base of that maple tree will actually be the top of our frame rocks for this waterfalls. So we're still gonna do a, a bunch of wing wall work over here, but I'm gonna go ahead and set a couple boulders so I can really set the tone for what's happening in here. And then we'll start to work our way back that way and kind of finish this area so that we can continue to work our way back out on the project. So really happy to have this part excavated. Now we can focus on the fun stuff and start building some killer waterfalls. 
Okay, so Dan had to reposition him just a little bit to get that blade out in front of him for a few of these heavier rocks. So we're gonna go ahead and strap this thing back up. And this, I believe, if I did things right, is probably gonna end up somewhere over in this area here. So I'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing set. So we got the boys kind of packing up. We definitely hit our milestone today. Super pumped with the progress that we made. Really, really excited with the progress that we made. Ooh, where is it at? There it is. Really excited. I told you we would get into the basin area and we have it 90% rocked in. We've got our frame rocks down and through here. You can see we've got a tall one there. Water level is right about there, which is what I showed you earlier in the video. But now you can kind of see it and have a benchmark with the rocks. We've got really, really cool plans for this area and through here. We've got this big flat slope slab stepping stone coming down into it we've got a retaining wall essentially done we've got a little bit of dirt work and finishing work left to do we've got this rock right here kind of going back that way put in an accent boulder in the back over here our steps are done we got to the point where we had to stop working on the stream i cannot wait to show you this waterfalls it is going to be absolutely incredible there's those two pump vaults that we showed you earlier when we were setting out the reservoir and i guess this is as good a time as any to explain to you why we put the two pump vaults where we did right so if you remember, you know, I guess it was a 30 triple stack large aqua blocks footprint in here. So it was a five by six footprint. And what we decided to do is locate the pump vaults here. So we've got a course of aqua blocks going that way. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is the second row if you were working your way this way on the five. So we have an aqua block here. And then the two pump vaults take occupy the space of two of those large aqua blocks. And then it goes for four, five, six, and then of course we have another six, six, six and then six back over and through here. The reason I decided to put the pump vaults over here is a couple things. One is I wanted to really have creative control when it came to rocking in over the top of the basin. I didn't want to put them in a corner because I knew that I was going to be rocking in this whole area. I also didn't want to put them in the dead center either, right? Right here. And I didn't want to put them on this side because of this seating area over here, knowing that I wanted to have some interactivity and a path into the reservoir. So I put the aqua blocks here with the intent that I will get and knowing that I had to put a retaining wall back along this side over here which you can see that we've started so we'll get another rock going back this way then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a flat slab of stone and bring it out in front of these pump vaults and then I'll cover the top of those pump vaults with gravel this will all be gravel and this will be little gravel you're probably also asking yourself those don't look like the top of aqua blocks well it is but what we did is we did a drop liner a bib liner underneath the aqua blocks so you can see we've got the aqua blocks under there we have a liner over the top of the entire thing. And you've seen us do this in other videos, whether it's big pondlesses or small pondlesses or some of these negative edges, we will end up cutting out a lot of this liner right around in here. And we'll strip all that liner away to keep this as infiltration area. If you aren't aware and haven't seen some of our other videos, the reason we have this liner over top of the aqua blocks is we wanna get that water to travel over the top of the aqua blocks instead of disappearing right down into the gravel at the base of the waterfalls, which is going to happen there. The reason we do that is just to increase its purely for aesthetic value one second is it actually is going to increase the functionality it's going to push the debris that falls down on top of the gravel and push it all into one centralized area the thing that you need to be concerned about folks is the infiltration area itself you are taking a very large footprint and condensing it down to a very small footprint so we're actually only using a fraction of the infiltration area of the aqua blocks and that's where all of that debris is going to collect rather than the whole thing it will collect in a centralized area so it's important to keep in mind the maintenance side of things as well you don't want to have that infiltration area too small especially with a lot of these overstory trees and have this thing get clogged frequently during the fall months when we start to get leaf drop or if they are flowering trees during the spring and they're dropping a lot of windblown debris down into the reservoir because we don't want that to get impacted get clogged and then have the water travel over that infiltration area and go on the outside of the liner and you're losing things because the water can't get down to the pumps fast enough it's a mistake I made at my own house and it's something to consider when you're doing some of these more advanced build techniques. Makes sense? If you have any questions, leave us a comment in the comment section below. Anyways, order of the business next time is going to be button up this waterfalls. We've got a, I, I just cannot explain or express to you uh, how excited I am to do that. This is that big negative edge. That's about a 30 inch drop coming down from there. So about a two and a half foot waterfall and we'll probably get a little bit more out of there. The stream will enter into the pond over there, converge with the pond and then everything will overflow into this area. Really love how it's turning out. Got 
got some really cool stuff up our sleeves to dress this area up and finish it. The steps are all done in through here. We're gonna have a really cool custom driftwood bench that will go in this area. And then of course we have our steps leading you back up to the steppers that go across our stream. And how cool is that? Leading you back up to this main patio and seating area. So I guess that's the wrap for the progress after four days out here. Really, really pleased. And I can't compliment my teammates enough. They've done a fantastic job and I love the design. I'm super excited. We've been given permission to basically have carte blanche on this project. So we're super excited to pull out all the stops on this one. It's gonna be incredible. Listen guys, thanks for watching. Come back to, for the next episode so you can see even more progress as we continue to motor along on this incredibly epic project. It's going to occupy the entire yard and turn this into a backyard aquatic oasis.